Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and I'm back for another in my lessons on the Old Norse language. This one covering so, meaning that and its various forms, and how those are used to form relative clauses in Old Norse. Now there's a very ancient pronoun in the Indo-European languages that we call the so-to pronoun, and by Grimm's Law that becomes something like the saw-tha pronoun in the Germanic languages. This is present in Old English as well, and in fact in Old English uh, it's a form of this that becomes English that, and uh, a worn down form of that becomes English the. In Old Norse it's not quite as prominent, but it does have a prominent role to play. Essentially you can translate this word as that when it occurs outside of a relative clause. So its forms are, and I'm going to go masculine, feminine, neuter, and nominative, genitive, dative, accusative as usual. Its forms are so, than, thes, Theim, Their, Tho, Theira, Theim. Su, Tho, Theirar, Theiri, Thar, Thar, Theira, Theim. That, That, Thes, Thvi, Thou, Thou, Theira, Theim. So sort of like an adjective or like the word the, you have to pick the form that actually agrees with the word uh, that it is uh, uh, defining, that it is making definite. So, for instance, you would say, so a mother, masculine nominative singular, that man, or theirar veraldar, genitive uh, singular feminine of that world, or thou skip, those ships. Remember that even though uh, neuter noun like skip doesn't change from the nominative accusative singular to the nominative accusative plural. Associated words like adjectives, the definite article the, and now this word that will change. So you have thought skip, that ship, versus thou skip, those ships. Um, the word that changes even if the noun doesn't. Now notice, of course, that you already know four sixths of this because the plurals are the exact same as the forms for they, them, their can celebrate quietly or uh, otherwise as you choose. And the forms for that and the neuter singular are the same as the forms for it. In fact, that is where those forms for it and they come from, is ultimately from these pronouns meaning that and those. And now, because uh, I have to, uh, to split this somewhere, let me just give you a quick word from my sponsor and then I'll tell you a little bit about how these are used in relative clauses. All right, so in Old Norse, we know that the relative is er, more archaic s, right? The one who knocks, the ship that floats, the woman who runs, whatever. Um, that who, which, that is all translated by Old Norse er and uh, more archaically s. But in order to use that relative er, Old Norse requires that you specify the noun with that. So in Old Norse, you can't just say, a man, of course there's no Old Norse word for a or an, but a man who knocks, you have to say that man who knocks, even if there's no actual specificity meant, right? So, um, I am uh, a man who likes birds. In Old Norse, you have to specify that, like I am that man who likes birds, even if there's no you know, real sense of specificity there, because lots of people like birds. So to give you some examples of what this looks like in actual Old Norse sentences, let me give you a few uh, drawing as usual from the prose edda by Snorri Sturluson, which I'm kind of using as the basis for the language in these lessons. Or þær er kaladar eru elivogar. Those rivers which are called elivogar. Eitar kvikasu er þar fulgði. That poisonous flow which followed there. Sindar that eren or eldenum, that cinder which ran out of the fire. Kyr su er authumla het, a cow which was named authumla. Notice you don't have to translate the that in English if it doesn't necessarily make sense. 
uh, in English. The that is just there because it's obligatory when you're making a who, that, which uh, relative clause. Han got son than erborhet. He had a son uh, who was named Bor. Again, I'm translating the, the that in Old Norse as an A and in English. Han fek therar konu er bestlahet. He got the hand of a woman who was named Besla. Thein benum er brotin voru, those bones which were broken. Av thvi blodi er or sorum ran, from the blood which ran from the wounds. Ganesta tho er lausir foru, the, the uh, sparks which uh, ran free or loose. Well, that gives you a sense of what these clauses are going to look like. Again, you don't necessarily need to translate saw in these relative clauses as that in English. Use your best judgment, but if it's just there to sort of set up the relative clause, consider whether or not it's actually specifying something or whether it's just the, the thing that's there to tee you off for the, the relative clause. So learn these forms, and then let me give you a few other vocabulary items to learn. Uh, as you embark on your reading that's in this video, as I promised uh, recently in another video. Now we're going to focus a lot more on kind of getting you ready for some more readings, uh, not focusing so much on long grammar lessons in these videos. So add these to your vocabulary too. Add skapar. This is a suffix on masculine nouns that makes something into a uh, noun if it uh, is not uh, before. It's, it's basically English like ship or dumb. So learn that, learn mjother, masculine noun that means mead. Learn ethroth, a feminine noun that means a sport. Learn sat, that is a, a treaty, a peace between people. And then there's also its negative, osat, an untreaty, unpeace, that means a, a state of, of unhappiness or, or discord existing between people. And then learn these three neuter nouns, upav, uh, beginning or origin, scold, poet, especially a court poet who composes formal Norse poetry, and folk, a group of people or an army. Not really used in Old Norse in the more general sense of like just people on the whole. Old Norse is more likely to use just men for that. All right, well, I hope that those of you following along with these lessons find something useful or informative in them. And uh, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best.